What up everybody, Scuffy here, and trying to get back to the deck list video. So this is a deck list actually that I was working on right before Titans released. Miros Junior Medicaid I the company. I think I did a video with uh I know I did a video with Ascalon. I know I did a video with um Amit, and I'm pretty sure in the past I've done a video with Ralderon. It's time to do one with the starter warlord. So if you like Blood Angels and you want to play it out, don't be swayed by this. A lot of these wins are actually with the new build. This is me trying to make him work at a much earlier phase in the game. This is before the uh, the changes, the, the mission, the, the changes to the Requiem, as well as the additional cards from Galaxy and Flames. So what I have is a mission build with uh, Medicaid Miros. Let's just call them heroes. And it's been pretty successful, both in terms of getting the mission, the Sons of Ball off, which is not hard to do. You just have to have a friendly troop trigger Requiem four times, not, not the Warlord. However, once that happens, then you obviously get the benefit of the, uh, the mission reward itself, which gives Miros Survivor 5 for one energy as well as whenever any of your units are going to trigger Requiem, they trigger Requiem twice, which is fantastic, especially late game when you've got some units just firing off. Now you can put this in play with Amit or Ralderon or Ascalon if you want to, although quite frankly, I think Ralderon and Ascalon work better with your standard landing deck and not necessarily Requiem builds, whereas Amit and Miros can do better with the Requiem builds. I did it with Miros to show that number one, it can be done. Number two, I wanted to do something with Miros a little bit more because i he's just totally unrepresented. Uh, and then also at the time, I was using just to kind of get past some poison and stun stuff that I was running up against. I figured, hey, you know what? This is working out so well. So I'm going to show you a game and then we'll go through the, uh, the deck list a little bit more in detail and then we'll do a couple other uh, highlights. Okay, so this game here against a, a Tarvitz, a Saul Tarvitz, which is always, always fun, really, uh, depending on how quickly he ramps up here. But when they changed the Miros ability, unfortunately, he no longer is able to, uh, to increase health. He simply heals too. So first turn, typically, you're just going to play the mission, and then it's a dead turn. That is a downside of... The mission for the Blood Angels with really only Ralderon or maybe Sanguinius not really being super affected by it because they can either use their ability or attack. Amit's going to attack uh, when he, if he, you kind of don't want him to if you don't have to with Amit because he's got Berserker and Azkalon would rather draw cards. So it is just kind of a throwaway first turn, but then you've kind of got the, the standard, you know, Requiem three play, four play start. These guys, Fervious Command, are just a solid Requiem card, as well as working the troops with Drop Pod in there. And anytime you can sandwich them with the troop or with the, uh, the Zealots, the, the Wounded, the, the, the Displaced Civilians, I think it's Displaced Civilians with the uh, the one ones. Um, that works out pretty good. And this unit here, we're getting two troops to trigger Requiem which is really nice. And then we're just gonna play Dracula Squad and that's gonna be our four triggers right there. One, two, one, two. And mission, mission by five energy. Super easy. Super easy at that point. He's down 15 health. We've got 31 health with the survivor. We're looking in a pretty good spot. Normally this is when Saul turns up the heat, but just not gonna happen. You get a position like that, you can really double down and it goes fast. It's possibly arguably the fastest you can get the mission off i think you might be able to get it off with a perfect hand and a uh, an opponent who doesn't know any better by four energy but let's take a look at the deck here so you get a better idea so the idea is a lot of requiem troops surprise surprise but the important thing is to note is you need some sustainability you can't just requiem away um Dracula's squad is great as far as a flank or fast, but they're really fuel for the Reckoning, as you saw in that last game. So you play them either between a Furioso and your Warlord, or in that game there was against the Fervious Command, as well as the Furioso, and you double up on the Requ Requening, Reckoning. Uh, maybe you throw them out late game with the Angel's Tears. You've got to use those guys widely. Don't just throw them out there 
if you don't have a reckoning troop next to them. that's their their intention is to kind of boost the reckoning then you've got harem squad which is a low cost requiem troop that deals two damage these guys are unrepresented enough which is a shame because I think they're really good, especially in Reckoning builds. They're, they're pop off for two, two, four, six, depending on how many troops you've already got on the board or what you're playing with from your hand to flank. Uh, and then in addition, with Miras's passive, he could potentially bless them with some additional health so they stick around a little bit longer if he himself isn't getting the health on top of that. So Harem Squad is a very good, it's a common, uh, Dracius Squad's a rare. One Prophecy Revealed, always a good card for draw, always good just to get the uh, the stealth hate in there. I've got Ekratrez in there just because I generally put him in there, and he's some additional healing for a three a 30 health Warlord. That's pretty good. A 30 health that could potentially buff, buff up his health. You get some longevity. Meditus and Furioso are just your best three drops out of the uh, out of the group. And then your four drops, you really get some good stuff. You get Elijah Janus, which is good if you've got Furvius Command out, otherwise it's kind of a troop that you use to bait. You're not going with a massive landing deck, but you are using a couple landing troops to bait your opponent into not attacking your Warlord because your Warlord has 30 health. Erlim Veterans are very good for Requiem Fuel with troops as well because number one, they've got that Rally deal to damage, but then they gain flank so then they can go into things, which is very nice. At three health, they're pretty disposable, but if you have them next to a Fervious Command, you're drawing a card as well as taking off your, your mission. Talked about Fervious Command, just another solid card, good with attacking with the five health, but also using it for those troops that have got Drop Pod. Not a, not a lot, just a couple of them in there. Uh, Mortat Tybral, another good target to kind of bait your opponent or get them away from your warlord. Using them for hard removal hate, it's bait. It, it's not something I use for the actual, like, destroy the enemy troop. If you get it, that's nice, but typically that's what Spear of Telesto is for. Angel's Tears is a two of. That's probably, as far as epics go, I would say that's the only epic you need to need to have. It really helps having Meditus. It can help having a Lia Janus. Not this guy isn't required. He's good bait, but you can find other bait. Angel's Tears is Requiem. It's damage. It's end game potential. You want to have two copies of these cards for Blood Angels, anyways. So you want to have them in with Miros. Dawnbreaker Cohort is another bait card, but it's a powerful bait card because if your opponent ignores it, that's 12 damage, and they're not going to ignore it. So that's nice. If they don't ignore it with Fervious Commander, they don't get the chance to. That's 12 flanking damage. Barge is in here because, number one, Barge has been a little bit improved with the increase of Imperial Army Frontline Troops, but also because it's a lot of cards on the board that you can then potentially use to fuel rec uh, uh, Requiem, either by your own troops on the following turn or with your Warlord, because if they kill all the Barge stuff, at the very least, Miros and other units are getting health. Airlifter Reserves is actually not bad if you get it in your opening hand. It's pretty good because it can be minus one cost when a friendly unit triggers Requiem. Guess what? That includes your Warlord. Host of Angels is a no-brainer. That is a always two of in every Blood Angels deck. Find a Blood Angels deck that doesn't run two of these in there, and you will find a Blood Angels deck that does not win. Um, Sanguinary Guard is just good. Crimson Paladins and uh, Venerable Jophile are in here because they are kind of the, the end game high power troops if you need something to stick a little bit more. Crimson Paladins is just a great card. It's got Requiem, which you use occasionally just to get the Survivor, but mainly as a deterrent to force your opponent, who maybe has used their hard removal on Dawnbreaker Cohort or Sanguinary Guard. Uh, now they've got to deal with this 8-8. Eight, eight. They can't even attack another one of your units without taking 3 damage to their Warlord. It's just a really good card. Venerable Jophile is a frontline with a shield and makes Astartes for you. That's good too. Why are these high costs in here so much? Because Miros has got the ability to gain health or give health. There's a lot of Requiem giving health, boosting stats, so your potential to go a little bit longer in the game is more likely. Now, again, this deck was all before Titan Death. Uh, this deck was all made and working before Titan Death. With Titan Death, it would work okay. And I'll tell you why as we watch, uh, do a couple of replays, and I'll kind of explain why this is not a bad deck for Titans, but it's not the best Blood Angels deck for Titans. So when you're facing Titans with the Blood Angels, uh, they've got a lot of flanking troops, they've got a lot of 
troops that you've got landing, which is great because against Titans, early on you're going to get those landing triggers off, which is really nice. And some of those landing triggers can be very nice. But when you're doing it with a Requiem build, which is what this is, this and Amit, they're, they're Requiem builds. They're designed to have disposable troops, troops that are not going to last too long, troops that are going to uh, either fuel their Warlord's ability for longevity, which is Miros's passive right here. He's gaining additional health to really make this game go longer. Um, or they are designed to be disposable throwaways because you're going to put a troop next to them that's got a Requiem ability, either a plus stat or a draw a card, do two th damage, three damage, you have control of the board that way. The problem with Titans is a lot of them have the zero attack stuff. Unless they've got a close combat weapon or they're playing troops that you can throw your stuff into, their close combat, uh, their, their attack value is very low. What that means is you're more likely to have your troops survive on your turn. And typically that's a good thing. That's really great for stunning the Titan weapons. It's great. That's fantastic. But with a Requiem build, what that also means is that means you're, you're giving up the advantage of controlling how your Requiem triggers by basically letting your opponent trigger the Requiem on their turn. And nine times out of ten, they can do it without actually benefiting your Requiem at all or, or getting the, the least impact possible as a result of that. And that makes it problematic. That makes, that makes doing a Requiem build effectively uh, and actually going the distance a problem. And the Titans go the distance. They are a faction that is designed and intended to go the distance. So problem, you've got a short turn, basically, a, I don't want to say a burn deck, but you've got a fast deck or a speed deck. The intent is entirely just to go fast, go hard all the way through. And this is where Lucius kind of makes a mistake. Ignoring that Furbius was not a good idea. That's an extra body I've got. Um, at the very least, I've got some additional health here. I can just boost my own health and heal too. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, but you also have got low health, so when you get wiped by a board wipe, by a Titan board wipe, missiles, claws, Gatling guns, whatever it is, your Requiem triggers, and then you're done. And, and the Blood Angels have got a couple ways to draw cards, but they, if they peter out, if they draw out or they don't, they get wiped down the board, their best answer then is another uh, host of angels at best and if they don't get that then they're kind of hosed then th that's all they've got available to them and then they're kind of like banking on your opponent making a misplay that's not where you want to be whereas if you're playing a control deck or you're playing a, a much more landing deck with the uh, last stand and you know big damage big burst troops that can not only stun titan weapons but also stick around a little bit longer then you're more likely to gain value here um the problem with that, otherwise, is just that these guys are going to die, and then you're going to be stuck with the Warlord, and you're going to be overwhelmed, and that's really what the Titans kind of want you, especially once they start getting shield out and stuff like that. You've only got a couple troops like Crimson Paladins or Dawnbreaker Cohort that might stand a chance, and that's not a game that you want to be in. You don't want to be in that position. So that's why Miros is not the answer compared to Askinlon. Roll around for the Titan games. Now, if you're not playing Titans, or you want to try Miros out to see if maybe you can tweak it around a little bit so that he can stand against Titans, then there's nothing wrong with it. I think that's that's totally acceptable. I think I think Miros is is good. I don't know if he is certified Titan killer. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say is I don't know if he is a certified Titan killer. I think getting the mission off is wonderful it's really fun when you do it plays a lot faster than d4 i'll tell you like i said without those games i played a lot of miros games before the mission to try to make him work and some success but it was really long drawn out games long drawn out games where nothing worked out right then the mission came along the first iteration of the mission i could get off with miros but it was really super boring because I think you had to get the uh, the Requiem triggered six times, if I remember correctly. And by that time, the game's going out, and you're really just healing yourself and drawing the opponent. I had like two or three wins, one of them against a Death Guard. And it was just a draw-out game. It was super boring. With the change to the mission itself being lowered to four, number one, it's accessible to other Warlords, Ahmed or, or 
Valoran again. Um, but also, then, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, you can actually, like, get some speed from me. You get the Survivor 5, which you didn't have before. So just even gaining Survivor 5 for one energy is an awesome benefit. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's, it's a good... It's in a good place, I think, the Blood Angel's mission, and I think it complements uh, Miros pretty well. It's really easy to do. Is it strong against Titans? Not just yet. Uh, I think you can probably tweak it to be so strong against Titans, and, and that's fine. But I don't know if you're going to get a lot more value out of it than that. Uh, those games are going to be hard, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not that's trying to trying to blow smoke. I think the Titans are a challenge. Um, but you can beat it, but the deck is it, it's gonna work against itself because the idea of reckoning going fast and kind of burning on your turn, you don't have that. You're now gonna have stuff out there that will burn when it dies, but your opponent can kind of pick and choose a little bit better when that is going to take place. And that's I don't think that's what you want. I wouldn't want that. Let me put it that way. I wouldn't want that. Um, so here we go. We've got we've got the the old. Uh, this kind of this is a, this is not really a, an example of a long game. This is a good example of a game that can go the distance. Um, Imon Teramaki and Custodes. They've got a really strong end game scenario with the Custodes with uh, with Telemandrinas with Amon's ability to stun and then hit to the one turn combo. He's playing some interesting cards here. Um, thankfully, I've got some interesting cards as well. Plus this awesome five sneak attack. Who's not, what's not to like there? The stunning on that, I just want to break the shield because I, I didn't want that thing being able to just attack without trading something. Uh, and he really is going to want to kill these two units. And that's just going to draw me cards and trigger, take down my, uh, my powerful ability. Gonna give me another card. Check it out. I've got my mission. By eight energy. Again, we saw it played earlier. We're all ready to go with the double harem squads out here. An Ornatov's barge that can be loaded up. Like he can wipe out stuff with uh with with the, like a like a or Auric Bartalis. And it could backfire against him if I've got the right reckoning troops on the board. Which is what we're gonna do here in just a sec. Just a single harem squad. Do it. And then that's firing off twice. I'm drawing two cards. I'm actually drawing way more cards. I kind of do want to have those cards at the same time, too. And then because I've got the full hand here, let's just drop that harem squad in there. So if he's going to kill one, I'm going to draw two. Or he's going to kill that, and I'm going to, you know, do some ping damage, gain some health, plus two health. This is just this is just ridiculous. Like I could potentially draw myself out, but I don't think he wants that. Day. Especially against uh, the Custodes when they don't. When he's got like, three cards in hand. It's not a good fit for him. It's not where he wants to be. This thing's gonna fire off twice, and I still have my Angel's Tears. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've got these Erlum veterans. We're gonna drop those guys next turn. Don't even need that. Don't even need to draw three cards at this point. But if you're not drawing cards, yeah, if you're not drawing your cards right away, that's kind of a that's a weakness. That's which is why I've got the airlifted reserves in there. That's one reason why the Fervious Command is so good for the Blood Angels. Uh, just for that, you know, kill a troop, draw a card, basically. And just double reckonings firing off. Pretty basic. That's how it works. He's got 18 health to my 25, so he could still come, turn around, but uh, it's not looking good for him. And we haven't even gotten out the big guys. We haven't got Sanguinary Guard and that stuff. Which, he's got the Hunting Eagles, so we want to be kind of careful putting out the Sanguinary Guard unless it's going to exchange fairly. Drop that right in between. Yeah. I don't mind if he's done. That's a front line, so it's not going anywhere, and all it's doing is making me troops. It's exactly what I want to do. And I can remove stun if he didn't know. 
You guys didn't remember that. You removed stun and poison, which is the whole reason why I was building this deck at the time. Because of that. It's like, yeah, you know what? Removing stun, that's a good thing. Removing poison, yeah, that's that's nice. I'm running into a couple of those decks. And then I started getting the motion. Then we got the change to the mission, and I really wanted to make that work, and I did. And I think this is I think he just kinda kills himself with uh, he realized it's just a simple Let's just trigger these records a couple more times. So, that is Miros. In a nutshell. Pretty basic. Pretty good. Pretty fun. Give it a try. If you haven't already thought about it. If, if, you, uh, if you were kind of wondering, like, what's the point of playing the mission? Or what's the point of playing Miros? Guess what? You can do both. You can have fun with both of the cards. If you're looking for some suggestions for substitutes, really quick, here's a couple cards I would recommend for Blood Angels. If you don't have some of the legendaries or the or the, uh, the epics that you could move in there, you could put in a Bane of Demons. I wouldn't put it too tactic heavy. If you're doing missions, you want to be able to have troops. Um, I would recommend One Last Stand as a potential, uh, just for those troops that do manage to survive either from the landing or um, otherwise. Uh, Sergeant Arvin is pretty good as a Requiem just for, just for the pack fact that you can drop him out there and he's a 3-5 or maybe even 4-6 if he triggers twice. This isn't a bad troop to have. I play a little bit faster with the flanking with the Dracius as well as the damage, but you can certainly use Sergeant Arvin in place of either a Furioso uh, or maybe an Alia Janus. Um, Vineman veterans I don't like. I pass on those guys. But Lorator Squad as a flanking has got 5-5. Five, five. The problem is it's, it's conditional that you have no other troops, which means you have to play him, and then you have to play your Requiem troop next to him. You can't just have a troop down on the board after that. And then I also was for a while they're running Savian Terminators just to gain some beef on the front line, try that out. I didn't like that so much because these guys are still totally bounceable by Ambassador Mugator. So eventually that's a card that you're going to want to phase out together uh but those are the high recommendations if you don't have jofiel cloden is not a bad replacement blood's wake is okay just because it deals five um five ordnance now that has a keyword to it uh otherwise you're gonna really go for some more neutral stuff some rally flanks maybe a vorax maybe a las rifle section something to do some damage on the exchange when it comes into play possibly one red thirst only because you're going to have a lot of troops with Reckoning in them. But the whole point of Reckoning, the Requiem, I should say, not Reckoning, Requiem, is that your troops are supposed to die. You want them to die. You want them to go away so you can trigger your mission, so you can trigger your Requiem multiple times. So if you're buffing those stats, use it cautiously because uh, you could actually, you know, shoot yourself out of a combo by using that. So... That's it for me, guys. That is the deck list. That's Miros. I hope you uh, got inspired by it. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. If you like the video, like it. If you want to let me know what you think about Miros. Have you played the Blood Angels? Have you played the mission at all? Have you played Miros? Have you tried this out? What cards do you find work? Or is this the optimum build? And if you have faced Titans with Miros, let me know how that went. Because I think he could do well. But as a Titan killer, I feel like the late game, he's really weak if you don't have a couple big bodies on the board, which is why, in general, you want to have a couple of those big guys. The Crimson Paladins is just such a nice addition. Just a really good card. Fairly statted. It does its work. It doesn't work all the time. In some games, it's just not going to work. But against like a, a Titan game or a game that's going to control, that's a pretty good ability. So, all right. That's it for me. Until next time. Keep playing nations.